Let's talk a little bit about if there is a regional power outage. It could be a grid down situation. It could be the worst of all situations where, you know, you can use your imagination. Maybe there's a hurricane that hits your area or a massive snowstorm. You know, Texas had a really massive ice storm, basically. I think it was two, three years ago, maybe a couple years ago, and they had power outages everywhere. So it could be a lot of normal types of things where you don't have self-service anymore. And I really want to visit with you guys about how you communicate in those situations. You can have a satellite communicator such as I've got here with the Garmin GPS Map 67i, the Garmin InReach Mini 2, and the Garmin InReach Messenger, and Zolio, ACR. I mean, there's all kinds of them, right? You have a lot of options to be able to communicate as many people might think and that is I've got my cell phone but say I'm here in Colorado and I'm camping and there's a lot of places out here that don't have cell service maybe it's that or maybe you know we had a power outage for a day or two this last winter those things you always have the potential for happening so you might think that all right between my cell phone and my satellite communicator I'm covered but that's not true and I really want to make sure there's an understanding here that when there's a massive power outage and maybe that power outage hits the Garmin servers. Now, I don't know where the Garmin servers are located. I don't know if it's here in Colorado or Kansas or someplace else. But say there is a power outage and their servers went down. Now, hopefully they have a backup system that keeps them running so that, you know, because if you're sending messages or selecting the SOS button and it's going up and talking to the satellite and then that satellite communication has to come down to the Garmin servers. Now, again, this I don't care if it's ACR or if it's Spot or who, Zolio, they all have their servers. And if so, any one of them, their servers go down, you're not communicating. I want you really to understand that because there's limitations on these satellite communicators. So this is where I'm really starting to take this channel is it's really about emergency communication. Now there's other things too I'll bring you like I've already done this, the emergency sleeping bag or maybe it's a flashlight with a strobe light in different ways that if you're out in an emergency you could throw stuff in your day pack or your backpack and you have a way to stay warm, to light a fire, to have some shelter and if you have to wait for search and rescue services services, then you have the ability to survive. So that's what this channel is about. But I was getting some comments last year and people were asking and saying, okay, hey, in a grid down situation, will the satellite communicator work? And the answer is maybe because it depends on the Garmin servers. Or, and again, I'm, not, I'm using Garmin as an example here, but any satellite communicator, any company, it depends on their servers. So this is where I really want to get to with this discussion is you should have your cell phone and you should have a backup power supply, solar, whatever it is. And then you should have a satellite communicator, especially if you're in the outdoors a lot. I would say phone, satellite communicator, ham radio. Now, ham radios are a massive subject in itself but at least a handheld ham radio and i have one and i'm starting to test these and i'm getting ready to take my test my technician license exam and then i'm going to go to the general and then to the amateur exam so all that's coming up but i myself am getting prepared for other things and i don't live in fear and i'm not here going oh what happens if whatever how you know we get attacked or there's a massive solar flare i know about those potentials, threats, but I don't live in fear about them. But I then also like to have some preparation. I have some food, some water, I have some water filters, and I have some basic ability to be prepared and to communicate and be able to survive. So let's recap just a little here. So phone, satellite communicator, handheld ham radio, because there's portables and there's base stations on the ham radios. Lots of things to get into. They have the antennas. They have the ones, if you have your handheld, that'll give better reception. And then you can get these huge antennas. And so that's another subject. You also need to be able to have a power supply to charge those, because if you lose power, then you can't use them. But if I have a handheld ham radio, and I'm even going to start to use these when I'm hiking, because these handheld ham radios, I don't have one with me right now, they're almost the same size, maybe slightly bigger than the Garmin GPS Map 67i, and they have a bigger antenna. But you're able to communicate with hikers around here locally. I was talking to a fire marshal, he's retired now, and he was telling me about all the different ham radio operators here between Denver and Colorado Springs. 
I guess there's repeater stations set up. There's people have base stations. And so if I have a handheld and something goes down in a bad way, then I'll be able to take that ham radio, that handheld, and be able to communicate. Now, I may not be able to communicate where I'm at, but if I'm traveling and I move, if I have to move, then I probably am getting some reception at some point because those things will reach maybe two to five miles out. And if you have a little tiny antenna that goes with your handheld, well, then you can get a lot more reception. So I know that I have the ability to do some communication, so keep that in mind. The other thing I would throw out here is a sat phone or a satellite phone. Again, there may be some limitations because those satellite phones are probably communicating with some system or service somewhere. And if that service goes down, then you may be left in the dark. Honestly, if I were gonna say anything here is like, great, if you got the money, it'd be good to have all of those. And I'll probably have a sat phone at some point, but the ham radio, that's something as long as you have power, then you aren't relying on any server or any system. Now there are repeat set up and things like that and then that, that helps you be able to communicate farther away i've just started my journey into ham radio so i don't know everything there is to know but as i go on this journey if you want to follow me that's what i'm doing is i'm as i learn as i take tests as i try different devices for beginners and i'm not talking to advanced people here in ham radios i'm saying if you want to get into ham radios and you want to learn along with me that's what i'm doing i just really wanted to bring to everybody's attention that you really should not just assume that you're always going to have your cell phone that works because one there could be a technical problem with your cell phone but there could be this problem with the system so having a satellite communicator a ham radio and maybe a sat phone and maybe there's something else i'm not thinking about but a lot of us don't have just unlimited money where we're going to have everything and be ready for the end of the world you know that's probably not the case just be aware some technology is not going to work at some point and a ham radio is probably one of your best backups to be able to communicate in any situation well that's it i just really wanted to help everybody understand the bigger picture of being able to communicate in emergency situations and you may not think that an emergency is really about communication but when you can't communicate with people and you can't find out news and i'm not talking about nightly news stuff i'm talking about real accurate news that can affect your life Maybe something's going on or there's help in certain places or whatever, or danger here or there. If you don't know that, well, hopefully you're away from everybody where it doesn't affect you. But if it does affect you, knowledge, understanding, education, all that really helps you to survive. And maybe it's not life and death, but maybe it helps you survive better or be able to get help faster. All right, that's it. I'm gonna wrap this up. I just really wanted you guys to see that big picture of communication and stop relying just on your cell phone. All right, thanks for joining me here in Colorado at Outdoor Emergency Tech, and I'll see you back out here in the next video.